If you uh, have a keen eye, you may notice that I'm wearing exactly the same thing I wore in the previous episode. That's because the last episode, this episode, and the next episode, I'm recall recording basically all at once. Because, spoiler alert, I have everything done. All that's left to do is drop the mofo. So, yes, very exciting. Let's get right into it, shall we? So for the most part today is all about going over what I did to seal and paint and protect the skydiver. Although we will cover a couple other things as well. Here are the materials I use to do this. Keep in mind, I'm no expert craftsman by any stretch of the imagination. So some of you who might question why I use some of these things, the reality of the situation is I use what I use because after some brief research on what experienced basswood sculptors use, this is what I came up with. But since this kind of stuff is new to me, I decided to first test the varnish, primer, paint, and protective enamel on a couple of pieces of basswood that I had drilled holes in and inserted screw inserts into, just to make sure that when all was said and done, the sealer and paints didn't warp or shrink the wood to the point those holes didn't line up perfectly, because they really need to. And if they didn't, that would ruin my weekend. It would ruin my year, let's be honest. But after a couple days of finishing the test run, everything seemed fine. Those screws and screw holes did line up well for the most part. So I continued on to the real thing. First painting each side with a couple coats of wood varnish that was 60% oil, polyurethane, and 40% paint thinner. Giving it four hours to dry and then painting it uh, once again with this time 80% polyurethane and 20% paint thinner. And then after 24 hours of dry time, I coated each side with primer and then white spray paint and gave it another 24 hours to dry. And then moved on to hand painting with testers enamel, uh, same paint you would use on like a little model kit, I guess. And not only am I not a master craftsman, but I'm also no artist. And I really didn't have a detailed design in mind, just a general over, overall look I was shooting for. And this is, this is what I came up with. The lawyer wife said it looked like the Red Bull space parachuter guy, which was kind of what I was going for, to be honest. So I, I guess it all worked out. Uh, I mean, Baumgartner is the, the guy on the thumbnail of these videos after all. But anyway, after another 24 hours of dry time, I finished it with a couple coats of protective enamel spray just to give the paint a little bit more protection. And after a final 24 hours of time to let everything settle, it was time to put the essentials back inside of them the hardware that's going to make his drop and hopefully his safe landing a reality. So once again, all four servos were delicately installed into his body. I also installed the release bar that I spoke about in like two episodes ago. I had to uh, cut a slot for that into the plate cover as well. And then all eight eyelet screws were installed. And finally the battery was placed inside and an interesting development was that it no longer fit flush against the back panel. It had to be, you know, installed at an angle. I'm guessing the paint did take up some room or maybe expand the wood a tiny, tiny bit. I, I don't really know, but it's fine. I think it actually kind of worked out better this way because now I didn't have to use a sponge foam to secure all that dead space inside the body. Yay, less weight. So he's ready to go. On to the next step, that is. Not, not to the drone. Okay. Because now he needs a container to hold his parachute before he jumps. And that's what we'll be covering in our next episode, our final build episode before the big drop. Until that time, Godspeed.